joining us again. Okay, um, let's continue on botanical source of dill. Uh, dill is dried leaf fruits obtained from anisams, gamanoins, and the families of the, the dill is yumbafai. So you can appreciate in the cartoon there. That is a uh, simple structures of uh, a deal. Now on geographical source of the deal. Our deal is cultivated in the centrals and in Eastern Europe, Egypt, and other some uh, Asian and uh, African countries, including in Tanzania. Also, the fruit of the deal is of an aromatic color and taste smells similar to that of colorways. Deal is used as a combinative and a flavoring agent and uh, also is much used in infants' deeps waters to reverse evacuations. So that is the use of the deal. Uh, thank you. Majina anaitwa Omega Mlawa. Nitakuwa nanyi hapa nikiwaelekeza jinsi gani shughuli tunazozifanya za tiba ya mionzi katika eneo letu la Bugando Hospitali. Katika kitengo hiki sio tu kwamba tunahusika na mambo ya tiba bali pia tunafanya research katika collaboration na watu mbalimbali. Mbali. Lakini tukiachana na swala la research pia huwa tuna tumika katika kufundisha wanafunzi ambao wanasoma kwenye chuo cha Kuhas hapa Bugando lakini pia hata wanafunzi wengine au watu mbalimbali mbali ambao wanakuja kwa ajili ya kupata maelezo tofauti tofauti kuhusiana na tiba ya saratani. Ukiangalia hapa tuna wagonjwa ambao wanaendelea na tiba ya saratani hapa wapo kwenye foleni wakisubiri kuingia kwenye chumba chetu cha tiba. Ngoja tuelekeze eneo jingine. Hili ni eneo ambalo mtaalamu anayetoa tiba ya mionzi kwa wagonjwa analitumia. Huwa tunaita control console. Hapa tuna kompyuta ambao ina taarifa za mgonjwa kwamba anatakiwa apate dozi kiasi gani na kwa muda gani lakini pia hapa tuna TV ambao imeunganishwa na kamera ndani inaomuonyesha mgonjwa anapata yupoje huko ndani kwenye chumba lakini pia kama amepata matatizo tunaweza tukamuona tukiwa huko nje Hiki ndio chumba chetu ambacho mashine za tiba zipo. Imeandikwa radiation therapy. Na hii hapa ni mashine yetu ambayo tunatumia 
katika mionzi ya nje tiba ya mionzi ya nje ambao hii tuna ndio mashine yenyewe hiki ni kitanda chetu ambacho mgonjwa huwa analala wakati wa kupewa tiba ambao mara nyingi wagonjwa kwa sasa hivi kama huyu mgonjwa wetu ana maelezo ni, ni mtu ambaye anaendelea na tiba kwao anajua utaratibu kitu gani ambacho anatakiwa afanye akiwa hapa kwenye mashine kwa sababu mwanzoni wakati anaanza tiba tulisha mtibu lakini mwanzo nilioelekeza kwamba mtu wa tiba anakuwa kule nje akimwangalia aki mgonjwa kwamba anatakiwa alaleje na ili apate tiba pia tunaweza tukaangalia taarifa za mgonjwa kupitia hizi screen zetu ambazo zikionyesha majina ya mgonjwa lakini pia ikionyesha mashine inatakiwa iwe na setup zipi ili mgonjwa aweze ili tusiweze kuchanganya kati ya mgonjwa mmoja na mgonjwa mwingine na pale tuna kamera ambazo ndio zinazotuonyesha kule nje kwamba mgonjwa yupoje kwa mfano huyu mgonjwa wetu hasa hapa ameshaandaliwa na mtaalamu ili aendelee kupewa tiba hapa ndi mtaalamu wetu anaendelea kumseti mgonjwa kwa ajili ya kuweza kufikia kitu ambacho kinatakiwa wakati wa kupewa tiba mgonjwa eneo ni eneo ambao tunasema ni la simulation au mashine zilizopo huku ni simulation simulation ni kitu ambacho tunamwanda ni mashine ambazo zinatumika kumwandaa mgonjwa kabla ya kupata tiba au kabla ya kuanza tiba kwamba mgonjwa anatakiwa aandaliwe kwa jinsi gani mtaweza kumtibu kwa hiyo tunaweza pia ukifuatilia hii haina utofauti sana na mashine ya tiba lakini kuna baadhi kwa sababu hii ni x-ray ya kawaida kwa hiyo inakuwa ni inatoa x-ray ambazo ni sawa na x-ray za kwenye diagnosis hapa pia tuna control console lakini kwenye chumba chetu hiki kwa sababu tuna screen hii inaweza kumuona mgonjwa direct ndani ndio maana hapa hujaona kamera zile ambao screen ya kuonyesha picha ya kamera kama kwenye mashine yetu Ukija hii ndio mashine yetu ambayo tunaita simulator mashine ambayo tunaitumia kumwandaa mgonjwa katika tiba zetu. Ukiangalia hii mashine haina utofauti mkubwa na ile mashine ya tiba kwa sababu pia ina kitanda sawa sawa na kile kitanda ambacho kipo kwenye mashine ya tiba ina kichwa ambacho pia kinaendana au kina tabia sawa sawa na zile kichwa ambacho kipo kwenye mashine ya tiba. Kinachotofautiana ni kwamba hii ni mashine ambayo inatoa mionzi midogo ambayo inatumika kwenye uchunguzi tofauti na mionzi ambayo inatoka kwenye mashine ya tiba. Tumeangalia mashine zetu ambayo ya tiba ya mionzi ya nje lakini sasa hivi tunaendelea kwamba tukua wameweka mashine ambayo itakuwa inatumika kwenye tiba ya mionzi ya ndani ambayo tunaita black therapy. Hii hapa unayoona ni console ambapo wataalamu watakuwa wakikaa kwa ajili ya kuendelea kutoa tiba kwa mgonjwa ambaye yupo ndani. Sasa tunaweza tukaenda tukaenda kuangalia chumba au mashine ambayo inahusika katika kutoa tiba ya mionzi ya ndani.
hiki ni chumba ambacho kina mashine ambayo itakuwa inatumika kutoa tiba ya mionzi ya ndani. Mashine yenyewe ni hii hapa ambayo ni brachytherapy mashine ni mashine mpya kabisa na ya kisasa ambayo inaweza ikatumika kutoa tiba ya ndani kwa magonjwa mbalimbali au saratani za aina mbalimbali. Hivi ni vifaa ambavyo pia vitakuwa vinasaidia katika kutoa tiba hiyo hapa. ambayo ni sehemu ambayo inashuhulikia kupokea kupokea uh, tishu au vinyama vinavyotoka kwa binadamu hasa wagonjwa wetu kwa sababu ni ni tasi au ni uh, Uganda Medical Center tunavyofahamu ni hospitali ya kanda ya ziwa kwa tunapokea wagonjwa mbalimbali ambao wanalazwa na wanakuja kufanywa operation wala ambao wanafanyiwa operation na ikaonekana kwamba kuna tatizo kuna uvimbe basi wanatolewa vinyama kwa nia moja kutaka kujua kubaini ni ugonjwa gani ndugu huyu inamsumbua kwa hiyo unaweza kuona kuna vicontainer vi, 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 vichache hapa vingine vimesha shughulikiwa tayari vinasubiri kufanyiwa uchunguzi kisha tolewa pale vinapewa namba alafu zile namba tayari zinaingizwa kwenye system kisha ingizwa kwenye system basi vinarudi tena hapa tunavichukua tunapochukua tunakuja tuna 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 tunavikata tunapokata tunaangalia sehemu gani ambapo itatupa picha nzuri na baadaye kubaini kwamba ni ugonjwa kwa hiyo basi mfano tunaweza kuchukua kopolo lilete kadogo haka kana namba tayari lakini pia kana kana tishu zimbali you come eh sasa tunapokuja tunakuja tunaweka hii ni bio safety hood ambayo inazuia matatizo mbalimbali kwa hiyo tuna tunajaribu kuiteremsha kidogo alafu tunaweka hapa tuna identify tishu na namba yake na mwingine naandika hapa tunachukua sasa hii kwa mfano ni vi, ni vitishu vya prostate au kwa Kiswahili mnahitaji e, tezi dume e, mtaalamu amekatakata na amevileta hapa ili kubaini huyu mwenye tezi dume ambaye alikuwa anamsumbua ameleta ili kubaini kama ni kansa au sio kansa ilikuwa labda limevimba tu likazuia mkojo usipite sasa kuto, kufanya operation bila kupima kwa kweli hujamsaidia mgonjwa. Sasa inapokuja hapa tunabaini. Kwa hiyo tunaweka hapa kwenye haka kaseti haka na baadaye tunafunika. Tukishafunika baadaye tunaweka sehemu hii. Hizi tayari zimeshakatwa zinasubiri kwenda kwenye sehemu nyingine. Hizi tayari zote hizi 
zimesha katwa ziko tayari kusubi, kupelekwa sehemu maalum na sehemu maalum ambayo naisema ndio hii hiki ndio chombo ambacho kinatumika sasa baada ya kukata na kubaini tatizo ni, ni, ni sehemu gani tukate ili tuendelee na safari yetu ya kwenda kwenye diagnosis hii ndio inaitwa histotech machine eh all processing machine kwa hii na jazi ambayo ni zaidi ya kumi, ziko kama kumi na mbili. Inazunguka na kila jaa ni maximum ya 2 hours masaa mawili. Inapanda ni automatic. Inapanda na kushuka, inapanda na kushuka. Kwa hii inazunguka na kila jaa kuna kwa na contents. Kuna kwa initially unaanza nani? Kwa unaweza ukafahamu. Eh, nini inaanza? ai formalini na ikuja aliko na kuja aliko concentrate zailini na baadaye inakuja inakuja kwenye nini kwenye wax kisha toka pale kwenye masaa hayo karibu kama 18 20 tayari ina stop ina post stop sasa mtaalamu anakuja na zitoa akisha zitoa zinaenda wapi nadhani mnafahamu zinaenda wapi inaitwa embedding E, section ina components ngapi tatu e, na component ya kwanza ya pili ya tatu sehemu hii ni joto sehemu hii ni baridi kwa katika hizi zinawekwa ile tishu inawekwa alafu inawekwa wax na inagandishwa inakuwa ni ngumu hakiki inakuwa ni ngumu kweli kweli tayari sasa kuja kushughulikiwa sehemu hii kisha toka hapa imeshaganda vizuri eh ambayo tayari ni hizi hapa tayari imeshagandishwa kwa hii nakuja hapa kwenye hii tunaita nini macrotom ambayo nia yake ni kukata na zipo za aina nyingi eh nitanishire nikamaliza kwa hii napokata inakata ka sehemu kadogo eh ka sehemu karibu ni haka kadogo eh mtaalamu wapi amekimbia hayupo eh anakata karibu ni kadogo haka Ha karibu ni sasa kanakuja kanachukuliwa kanawekwa kwenye sehemu hii ambayo ni flotation water bath kwa nia moja tu kwamba isiji kawa imekunjika kunjika hako tayari katakuwa na ile tishu katakuwa na ile nyama kanawekwa hapa ili iwe flattened iwe isiji kakunjika kunjika halafu baadaye sasa kanawekwa kwenye nipe slide eh kanawekwa kwenye slide eh ha kanapowekwa kwenye slide basi kana tolewa pale kanaweka kwenye slide hapa inakuwa flattened vizuri na baada ya hapo sasa kanaenda wapi ehe ambayo ni sehemu hiyo hapo inakuja moja kwa moja hapa e, wanafanya staining hii ni manual staining kwa kutumia mikono lakini katika sehemu ambapo nadhani ndiko tunakoelekea tutatumia automatic staining machine kwa sasa hivi ndio tunachechemea hivi tunaenda vizuri tu kwa kutumia mikono. Kwa hapa kuna sehemu mbalimbali na hizi jazz ni sehemu za dakika fulani fulani unatoa unamaliza hapa unakuja hii na unakuja nyingine mpaka baadaye unamaliza. Ukishamaliza sasa unaiweka hapa inakuwa a bit dry na baadaye unaweka nini? E, mounting. Wataalamu wanatumia DPX eh, eh, DPX hii mounted eh basi hii maana yake kwamba inagandisha ina, inafanya nini ile? Eh, inafanya ili na reflective vizuri contract inakuwa nzuri ili iweze kusomwa tayari. Hizi tayari zimesha ziko tayari hizi kufanywa nini? Kusomwa na zimepewa namba. Eh, kwa identify na hii namba inatokana na penseli kwa nia nzuri kwamba inaweza kukata miaka mingi ijayo, hata miaka 20 30 bila kufutika. Hawatumii inki, hawatumii wino. Kwa hiyo baada hapa ziko tayari sasa kwenda kusomwa na wataalamu wengine huko tunakoenda sasa ndio huku tunakuja huko kuja kwa wataalamu hapa sasa uh, dr cosmas uh, yuko hapa pathologist na yuko tayari nadhani anafanya mambo yake hapa naangalia ambayo tayari vitu hivi vimechukua tayari vimesha tayarishwa tayari kwa kusomwa tayari nadhani daktari pala anaweza kaendelea daktari hebu elezea kidogo unafanyaje baada ya staining kule technician ana submit slide zote hapa. Na hizi slide anazileta kwa kiwa tayari amekisha zipitia kuona kama kuna any kind of artifacts. 
ambazo they can lead into abnormal interpretation or false interpretations kwa hiyo anacho anachoangalia kwamba either they are calling artifacts then overload the artifacts they are poor staining au kwa kuna over dehydration tissue kapotika au utapata poor results au unaweza kupata wrong diagnosis kwa hiyo anaweza submit hapa ambayo ziko very fresh kwa role yetu hapa sisi ni ku interpret kwa tafsiri sasa tissue ambayo inakuwa ni ndogo sana thini ime kwenye slide afu ime ime cover na cover slip ambayo hii slide itakaa even 100 years to come ukishasoma hapa kwa diagnosis zinarudishwa zinatengenezwa na hapo kwenye archive kama ukitokea ene inconvenience haukulizika makinisha na diagnosis tulitoa hapa unakuja mna review unaona tafuta pathologist mwingine au wawili au watatu wanatoa opinion zao or you can do further investigation on immunohistochemistry for this hapa tuna based on the morphology morphology ya cell morphology ya tissue as a whole fibrous connective tissue plus cells morphology normal and abnormal so the the principal thing here ni kuangalia je hii tissue ndio inaangalia iko normal au iko abnormal then you give the diagnosis naitwa Musa Bihali Balema ni mteknolojia wa maabara za afya na hii ni maabara ya kupima vinasaba vya ukimwi hasa na sio vinasaba vile vingine na vinasaba hivyo tunavipima ili kuweza kuangalia maendeleo ya wagonjwa ambao wanatumia dawa za kulefusha maisha kuangalia jinsi utendaji wa dawa ulivyo kama eh, virusi vinapungua kwa ule utumiaji wa dawa ama vinaongezeka ama vinakaa katika idadi ile ile kwenye damu hasa ndiyo shughuli ambayo tunaifanya lakini cha pili kikubwa tunachokifanya ni kwamba tunapima vina saba kwa wale watoto ambao wanakuwa wamezaliwa na wazazi walioathirika na maambukizi ya virusi vya ukimwi ili kuangalia kama wale watoto wamezaliwa na maambukizi ama wamezaliwa bila maambukizi kwa ajili ya kuchukua hatua zaidi. Yeah. Na hapa tuko na wanafunzi kwa sababu Bugando Medical Center ni teaching hospital. Kwa hiyo tunapata wanafunzi eh, ambao wanakuja kupata mafunzo eh, katika eh, idara zetu. Kwa hiyo wanaingia humu na hawa wengine wako katika idara zingine katika vitengo vingine pia wakifanya mafunzo yao kwa vitendo. Yeah. Na kinachoendelea hapa ni ni tunaandaa zile runs kwa sababu tunapofanya upimaji kuna capacity ya mashine ambayo kwetu sisi hapa mashine tunazotumia zinaweza kuchukua sampuli 24 kwenye run moja. Kwa hiyo tuna tunaandaa zile sampuli katika mafungu ya 24 24. Yeah, kwa hiyo ndio kitu ambacho tumewaelekeza wanakifanya baada ya hapo tutaingiza kwenye kwenye mashine. Ndio. Ndio unaona wana wanafanya kazi kwa kadri ambavyo wamepata maelekezo na wa, ili waweze kupata uzoefu pia na wao kusaidia jamii yetu ya kitanzania mara watakapomaliza mafunzo yao. Ya.
inaitwa Prem Unit ya UC2 neonato unit ambao tunalaza watoto wote ambaye tunaita ni neonet tunawalaza huku kwa kwa ajili ya observation kwa ajili wengine wanaumwa kwa hiyo wale wote wanayezaliwa hapa Bugando ambaye wana kuanzia siku sifuri mpaka siku 28 wanalazwa hapa na wale wote wanayetoka nje ambao wana siku kuanzia sifuri mpaka 28 pia wenye magonjwa mbalimbali mbali pia wanalazwa hapa kwa hiyo magonjwa ambayo yanapatikana hapa kwa wingi zaidi tu ni wale watoto wasio ambao wamezaliwa kabla ya muda wao tunaita premature baby wanalazwa hapa kutoka hapa au kutoka nje wanaletwa moja kwa moja hata sasa hivi tunao ambao wametoka nje wanatoka nyamagana wanatoka seketure wanaletwa hapa na wanapata huduma vizuri hapa kwetu kutoka pale kuna wale watoto ambao wanazaliwa kwa mfano mama zao au wamepata operation pia wanaletwa hapa kwa ajili ya observation mpaka mama zao waanze ku ambulation wakishaanza wanakuja kuwachukua watoto wao kama wameshapata maziwa ya kutosha wanawachukua watoto wao na si wote kwa sababu wodi yetu haitatosha kunani wale isipokuwa wale ambayo mama zao labda wanaumwa sana hawezi kuwa nani wale watoto baada ya immediately baada ya operation wapelekewa watoto wao pengine mama ni anaumwa umuhimu wa wa hii unit kwa wanafunzi mpaka sasa kwa sasa tunategemea hapa tuna pedilishia ni wako watatu sasa kama ni wako watatu hatuna budi sisi pia kufundisha wanafunzi wengine waje waweze na wao kufundisha hao yani kutibu hawa neonet kwa hiyo kila jumatatu tunapata wanafunzi wasiopungua kwa sababu hapa unit ni kwa namna fulani ni ndogo wanafunzi tunao wengi kwa hiyo walao huwa tunakuwa kila jumatatu mpaka ijumaa tuna wanafunzi wasiopungua sita wanakuja hapa na jinsi ninavyofanya assessment ya kumtibu huyu na mimi na mfundisha huyo mwanafunzi anayekuja na kwa kawaida huwa tunachukua wanafunzi wa mwaka watatu na mwaka watano kwa hiyo huwa anakuja kila jumatatu na tunawafundisha umuhimu wa kuwatunza hawa neonet kuna pia magonjwa mbalimbali tunawafundisha hao wanafunzi ili waweze na wao kuwa madaktari wazuri wa kuja kutibu baadaye. Kwa hiyo kwa namna fulani tunawafundisha jinsi ninavyofanya mimi kufanya assessment hapa huwa tunawafundisha namna ya kufanya examination ya newborn. Tunawafundisha namna ya kuwatibu hao watoto na wanafunzi wanapokuja kwa mfano hiyo Jumatatu tunawaomba kila mwanafunzi aweze ku na ku present. Kwa hiyo wanafanya presentation Alafu kama tunaona kama wamefanya vizuri na kama kuna mapungufu mapungufu tunawaelekeza namna ya kufanya examination namna ya kutibu namna ya kufanya nini kwa hiyo tuko pamoja kwa hiyo tunawafundisha kila siku walau ugonjwa moja kwa hiyo ndio faida na umuhimu wa wanafunzi lazima waingie huko kwa sababu hawezi kuwa na magonjwa yale ya, chi, ya juu tu na hao lazima wajue na ndio maana tunakuwa hata na inten doctors wanayokuja kule sasa kama tusipowafundisha wanafunzi wetu wa chuo cha hapa juu ya neonet anapokuwa inten lazima aje huko na wakati mwingine kama niko bize wanakuja hapa wanaanza kufanya pre round na mimi nakuja tunamalizia pamoja nao kwa hiyo ni, ni muhimu sana ku wanafunzi wa Bugando kupitia hapa pia of the Catholic University of West and the Light Sciences. So I think 
one way of teaching students to enjoy, especially in medicine, we have to use what we call evidence-based medicine. You teach students things which they will see, they will use. So I think at Coors, we really we are trying to do that. We have done a number of research. And we use those data on the research to teach our students. For example, now when we are teaching our students about Enterobacteriaceae and Enterobacter, we tell them that we have another species which is Enterobacter bugandensis. Because they have been involved in isolating it, they will understand more. So when we are discussing about antimicrobial resistance, we tell about the situation, what is happening in Tanzania, we give the, our data. When we talk about zoonosis, for example, Yes, there are some pathogens which they are commonly in Mwanza. We tell them in Mwanza the common are Brucella, maybe Leptospira. So we give them the data from our own area. So this makes students enjoy and know that what is happening is real. So research, in short, here at Coors, help us to tell the student and to teach the student evidence-based medicine based on your own data. I think you want to know about the discovery of Enterobacter bugandensis. This bacteria was discovered in 2010, at that time when I was doing my PhD. So it was first isolated here at Bugando, and the, about 20 neonates were infected with this particular bacteria with mortality of about 30%. At that time, we didn't know what is it, so we tried to identify it using our own methods. Then we went to German and type it, and we ended up knowing that it's a novel species. And at that time we didn't know, and we did not give it the name, because we had it confirmed. So we published the first paper that we have a novel species in the International Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy in 2011, about a novel species killing neonates in Tanzania. Then in 2016, we did more work on it so that we characterize it, so that to know that it is real, a new species, a novel species. And we ended up, after doing all molecular phenotypic, we ended up knowing that it's a new species, so we had to give it a name. So we published the paper in the International Journal of Systemic Evolutionary Microbiology where any new species must be published in that journal. And we name it Enterobacter bugandensis. And some few years later, I think in 2017, some other groups detected this particular species as the commonest species in international spaces. I think people, they know what we mean when they say international spaces. When people, they want to go to some, to the moon, to where there are some station. So in those stations, we found that it was contaminated by this particular species, Enterobacter bunganesi, the commonest species. And also, this year, we have published a paper which is showing that this Enterobacter bunganesi, among the, the genus Enterobacter, we have many species. We have Enterobacter cloaca, Aspurae, Aruginesa, bugandensis, and the other. So Enterobacter bugandensis is the most virulent species. So if you can compare which species is killing more, Enterobacter bugandensis we have established is killing more than other species in the genus Enterobacter. So we have published this paper in Nature, in one of the journal in Nature scientific report, which shows that Enterobacter bugandensis is as virulent as Salmonella tifumurium. Is more virulent than other bacteria like Klebsiella pneumoniae, Escherichia coli. So, in in short, Enterobacter bugandensis is a pathogenic bacteria. It's more virulent. It's killing. And what currently we are doing now, we are developing a cheap method so that we can use it to detect it, to detect it, because we think it may be the common bacteria, especially in developing countries, neonates. So we have to come up with a cheap method to identify it so that it is treated early to avoid the associated morbidity and mortality. And this is because the Enterobacter bugandensis, compared to other species, it has a plasmid which kills some resistance genes. So this bacteria, apart from being virulent, is also 
multi resistance. So most common antibiotic cannot treat it. You need to use the advanced and very expensive antibiotics like meropenem. So you need to detect it early and start treatment early so that you can save life. So in short, that's it's a progress in this discovery of enterobacter bugandesis and what has been done so far. Yeah, when we started work on enterobacter bugandesis in 2010, I worked with the, one of the, my students who is now a pediatrician, Dr. Neema is the head of the department of pediatrics. We worked together to discover this pathogen because at that time she was involved in taking care of these neonates. And then later we worked with some more students here in Tanzania, here in German. So we worked with Dr. Sen, at that time was tutorial assistant, and some BMLS student, at that time was Bernard Okamo and Vitus Slago. We worked together to, to isolate this pathogen and characterize it. But of the recent, we have worked with the students from German, and one of the students, I got PhD after discovering this one, but more characterization, one of the students from Germany also has got PhD after doing more work on this. So a number of the students are involved. And now we are developing this tool to detect this pathogen, and the students are going to use this tool also to try to look for more strain of this particular, especially from different hospitals here in Tanzania. Welcome to the Catholic University of Health and Allied Sciences, KUHAS, which is located at Bugando in Mwanza, Tanzania. KUHAS is a TCU accredited university offering different programs to meet the market needs in the health sector. We offer diploma programs in laboratory sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, and in radiography. We also offer undergraduate degrees in nursing, medical laboratory sciences, pharmacy, and medicine. In addition, we offer postgraduate programs in Master of Public Health, Master of Science in Pediatric Nursing, Master of Medicine, and PhD. For applications and more information, please visit our website or contact us through the details provided. <music>